Mr. President, Chairperson, fellow South Africans, perhaps Minister Lamola should uh, note that I'm speaking straight after the former Minister of Energy, Jumat Peterson, who still hasn't been held accountable for her despicable role in the illegal sale of South Africa's strategic fuel reserves. If you want to look for corruption, Minister, look in the mirror. The President said a fair bit about energy and electricity security in the State of the Nation Address, but we've heard all those promises before. In fact, Mr. President, if you're there, you said on 2 September 2015, and I quote, in another 18 months to two years, you will forget the challenges we had with relation to power and energy and ESCOM ever happened. By that reckoning, we should have been free of rolling blackouts by the end of 2017. Instead, we were subjected to stage six load shedding in December 2019 and stage two and three over the past few days. In 2020, we had more load shedding, despite a depressed economy because of the COVID pandemic, than any other year in history. And 2021 looks to be worse still. According to ESCOM, they ran diesel peaking plants at a cost of 7 million rand per hour in order to keep the lights on while you were making your SONA address. So much for the cheapest SONA ever the presiding officers promised. ESCOM also announced last week that over the past 10 years, they have spent 47.4 billion rand on diesel to mitigate the effects of load shedding. That's 47 billion rand that could have been spent on upgrading our generation capacity or improving our health care or providing housing or even reducing ESCOM's debt burden. But no, because of corruption, maladministration, a bloated state-owned entity, and a reluctant, recalcitrant, and frankly moribund government, the citizens and the economy of this country have to suffer. So Mr. President, you will forgive me a healthy dose of skepticism when you say you will open bid window five of the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producers Program soon. You promised the exact same thing in last year's SONA address. And yet, not a single megawatt of electricity of new generation has been procured in over five years. This government's dithering has resulted in job losses, ratings downgrades, and business closures. One example is DCD wind towers in Port Elizabeth. They manufactured wind turbines, but thanks to delays in signing power purchase agreements, and the policy uncertainty that persists to this very day, they were first forced to close their doors and lay off their staff, and they're not the only company in this predicament. As the DA, we're not sitting around waiting for government to act. We are proactively seeking solutions to ensure the energy security of our country. DA municipalities like Stellenbosch are at the forefront of seeking independence from ESCOM's monopoly by investigating own generation and the potential supply from independent power producers. We put on the table a proposal for the creation of a truly independent system market operator, one in which ESCOM was not the dominant player with the power to call the shots. But this was rejected without proper debate by the ANC colleagues on, on that committee. We've made proposals for a tax rebate to incentivize small scale embedded generation like rooftop solar. We have urged you to urgently and significantly amend Schedule 2 of the Electricity Regulation Act. Our offer remains. We are ready and willing to work with you to secure South Africa's electricity supply. I personally wrote to Minister Mantashe at the start of lockdown, offering my support and assistance in any way whatsoever. I didn't receive a response, but I should be used to that. Instead, he continues to promote a nuclear new build as a potential solution to our electricity crisis. And Mr. President, you have given this flight of fancy momentum by signing it into his performance agreement, despite there being no provision for it in the IRP. There is no way South Africa can afford a nuclear build at this time, nor is it something that will address the short and medium term issues. So let's ditch this vanity project right now before it gains any further traction and opens the door to yet more corruption. Mr. President, much of the critical reform needed to transform South Africa's electricity sector can be rectified with a stroke of a pen. Unfortunately, that pen is held by Gwede Mantashe, who appears to operate at glacial speed. Last year, you made many of the same promises that we heard on Thursday. But the big question is when? What are the hard deadlines for electricity reform? 
So, Mr. President, while we welcome the promises you made in your most recent Sona speech, we're not holding our breath. It's clear that your government is incapable of keeping the lights on. Thank you.